So around a month ago, when I made the Joe Maurer Hall of Fame case video, I found this article on Fangraphs by Jay Jaffe, the creator of the infamous Jaws statistic, which is used by many as a baseline of whether someone deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. This article is called Joe Maurer and the Rule of 2000. It details how Joe Maurer cleared a major hurdle towards making the Hall of Fame when he hit his 2000th hit. Why was that a major hurdle? Let me introduce you to the rule of 2000. No position player with fewer than 2000 hits whose career crossed into the post-1960 expansion era has been enshrined in Cooperstown. Look at this chart of the most recent Hall of Famers with less than 2000 hits. Of course, pitchers are not included. Out of these 11 players, the player who played the most recently was Larry Doby, whose career ended in 1959 although he was inducted to the Hall of Fame in 1998. In fact, here is when every player on this chart was inducted into the Hall of Fame. Interestingly, five of these 11 players were inducted within the last 40 years, despite all of their careers ending over half a century ago. Although the fact still remains, the most recent player to finish their career with less than 2,000 hits and be inducted into the Hall of Fame ended their career in 1959, 61 years ago. Here are some more modern players who finished with less than 2,000 hits. Listed next to them are their Jaws rankings according to their position and their career war according to Baseball Reference. Many of these players have interesting cases that have been overlooked over the years. We already looked into Andrew Jones's case already. Go check out that video if you feel like it. But I said that I would like to see Jones in the Hall of Fame. Bobby Gurch is someone that I hadn't really heard of, so I will have to look into his case in the future. McGuire will never get in. Most likely the same case with Shoeless Joe Jackson. Despite all of that, this list shows that the 2000 hit mark is a major barrier that a modern player has to overcome in order for the voters to consider you. Jones could break that trend, but there are two players under the 2000 hit threshold who have Hall of Fame cases that I want to look at, Chase Utley and Ian Kinsler. Before we take a look at their careers, I would like to thank Out of Here Baseball and Matt Bob 40 for their suggestions. If you have a player you think I should look at, then leave that player in the comments. I'll be summarizing each player's career as concisely as possible and then look at their Hall of Fame cases afterwards. First, let's look at Chase Utley. Utley was drafted in the 2000 MLB Draft by the Philadelphia Phillies and the first round at number 15 overall. He debuted for the Major League team in the beginning of the 2003 season, but he was optioned to AAA at the end of April. He came back in August of 2003 and he recorded his first Major League base hit, which was a grand slam. In his first two seasons, he was blocked by Placido Polanco. However, in June 2005, Polanco was traded to the Detroit Tigers. In his first season as a full-time starter, Utley had a breakout season, finishing 13th in MVP voting. In his next season, Utley proved his breakout season wasn't a fluke. He would make his first All-Star team. In fact, he had a stretch where he had a 35-game hitting streak, the second longest in Philly's history behind Jimmy Rollins. Between the years of 2006 and 2010, Utley was among the best infielders in the league. He was an all-star and a silver slugger in every season during this five-year stretch. While he never won an MVP, he consistently got MVP votes. This next stat really shocked me. According to Fangraphs, during this five-season stretch, Utley ranked second in the whole league in war, trailing behind only Albert Pujols. And it's not like Utley was only slightly ranked higher than the players below him. The player ranked in third place, Joe Maurer, had nearly seven less war than Utley. While Utley was a great hitter, his defense is what ultimately gave him the edge over many of his peers. During this five-year stretch, Utley ranked second in the league in Ultimate Zone Rating, or UZR, and first in Defensive Run Saved, or DRS. He may not have won a Gold Glove Award, but his defense was exceptional. Of course, we can't forget his championship in 2008. He only went 3 for 18 in the series, but he hit two home runs and walked five times. In 2009, the Phillies lost the World Series against the Yankees, but Utley hit five home runs in that series, tying Reggie Jackson for the most in a World Series. However, in 2011, we saw a different Chase Utley. Years of chronic injuries had caught up to Utley, causing him to miss a good chunk of the season, which in turn caused a decline in his stats. Over the next few seasons, he missed chunks of the season due to knee problems. 
However, in 2014, Utley started the season strong, which caused fans to vote him in for his sixth All-Star game. Although this impressive stretch didn't last very long. In 2015, after more injury issues, Utley was traded to the Dodgers. Of course, in 2015, Utley was involved in a moment that quite possibly might overshadow what he did in his career in the eyes of some baseball fans. I'm not here to talk about the ethics of that moment, I'm just acknowledging that it happened. A couple of years later in 2017, Utley played in his third World Series, but he would come up short yet again. He retired after the 2018 season, finishing with this career stat line, as well as with 1,885 total base hits. Now let's look at Ian Kinsler's career. In 2003, he was drafted by the Texas Rangers in the 17th round. He showcased his skill in the minor leagues and he got the starting second base job in 2006 after Alfonso Soriano was traded. He had a solid rookie campaign as he finished 7th in Rookie of the Year voting, which just means that he had one vote, but that's still an accomplishment. In 2007, he was one of only 6 players in the American League with 20 home runs and 20 stolen bases. In 2008, he played in his first All-Star game. Although in August 2008, Kinsler was shut down as he needed season-ending surgery. He came back in 2009 with more of a power swing as he hit his first of two 30 home run seasons in his career. In fact, on April 15th, 2009, he hit for the cycle against the Orioles, also going 6 for 6 for the day. He finished the season with over 30 home runs and 30 stolen bases, the only player in the MLB to accomplish that feat in 2009. Over the next few seasons in Texas, Kinsler made two All-Star games and two World Series, although he did not win in either trip. In 2011, he became only the 12th Major League player in history to join the 30-30 club twice in a career. In 2014, Kinsler was traded to the Tigers in exchange for Prince Fielder. During the season, Kinsler made his fourth and final All-Star game. Despite a loaded roster, the Tigers would lose in the 2014 ALDS against the Orioles. Kinsler continued his offensive success through the 2016 season, where he also won his first gold glove. I'm going to call the period between 2018 and 2016 the best stretch of Kinsler's career. According to fan graphs, Kinsler ranked 14th in war, 15th in UZR, and 11th in DRS. After the 2017 season, Kinsler was traded to the Angels, and then to the Red Sox in mid-2018. Kinsler won two awards during that year, a gold glove, and a World Series title. In 2019, he signed with the Padres. He didn't perform very well. However, in what would be his last game, he pitched for the first time in his career in a blowout loss against the Rays, as well as hitting a home run, which would be the last hit of his career. He ended his career with this stat line and with 1,999 total hits. And those were the careers of two of the best middle infielders of the 2000s. Now, the question is whether they can break the 2000 rule and make the Hall of Fame. Chase Utley only ranks slightly behind the average Hall of Fame second baseman in terms of Jaws. Kinsler is further behind. In fact, when you look at Career War and War 7, which accumulates the best 7 seasons of a player's career, Utley ranks higher than Kinsler. I just have to be honest with Kinsler. I don't think he will make the Hall of Fame. He had a great career. For many years, he was a consistent offensive presence while playing elite defense at a premium position. Although he does rank higher in wars and jaws than many second basemen already in the Hall of Fame, all of those guys played in the early to mid 20th century. As modern players get better, voter expectations for the Hall of Fame rise. You can point out that players in an earlier era were not as good as modern players, but you can't just vote them out of the Hall of Fame. You have to understand that they were among the best in their era. Kinsler was very good, but he was never the best. In fact, here is a chart that compares Kinsler with other great second basemen of the 2000s. Kinsler just wasn't the best. It pains me to say it, but Kinsler will not break the rule of 2000. As for Chase Utley, he definitely has a more promising case. According to Baseball Reference, Utley ranked second in war between the years of 2005 and 2014, once again behind Albert Pujols. He was a great hitter, fielder, and base runner, everything you could want out of a player. In fact, this chart shows that Utley was above average in nearly every facet of his game. The problem is that he did not play at that all-star level for very long. 
During the first eight seasons of his career, Utley was a five-time All-Star and a four-time Silver Slugger. During his last eight seasons, he was only a one-time All-Star. One player you could compare Utley with is Jeff Kent, who has spent the past seven years on the ballot. In 2020, he took a big jump to receiving 27.5% of the votes casted. When you compare the career stats of Kent and Utley, you see that Kent had better hitting stats, although it's worth mentioning that Kent had around 1,700 more plate appearances than Utley, and Utley accumulated 10 more war than Kent. This was because Utley was a better base runner and fielder than Kent, who was below average at best in those two aspects of his career. Although Kent did win the 2000 NL MVP award, something Utley never did. 2006 was Utley's best MVP ballot, where he finished in 7th place. One key aspect will be how voters value Sabre metrics, particularly when it comes to defensive metrics. Look how Utley ranks in key defensive metrics between the years of 2005 and 2010. He was the best by a landslide, although he didn't win any gold gloves. This is most likely due to the fact that Utley was never the flashiest defender compared to the likes of Brandon Phillips. These stats, particularly his range stats, show that Utley was great at positioning himself before the ball entered play, rather than making diving stops all the time. Utley will first appear on the Hall of Fame ballot in 2024. There are a couple key factors that will drive whether Utley eventually makes the Hall of Fame. First, how Jeff Kent's Hall of Fame chances end up. His 10th year on the ballot will be in 2023. If he reaches somewhere between the 40 and 50% mark, I think Utley will have a shot. If the voters look at defensive metrics rather than Utley's lack of gold glove awards, that will also increase his chances. Personally, I think Utley can break the rule of 2000 and make the Hall of Fame, although outside factors will dictate whether this actually happens. So in the end, I think Kinsler doesn't make it while Utley will make it. I think this was a fair comparison. Both of these guys were great second basemen during the same era. It just so happens that one has a better Hall of Fame resume than the other. And well, that's just baseball. Before I end the video, I just want to say thank you for 1000 subscribers. Thank you to everyone who has watched a video and has contributed to the growth of this channel. We hit that milestone around a week or two ago, and it's just great to see the channel keep growing. I will continue to bring out baseball content, as well as some other sports content for the foreseeable future. So subscribe if you want to stick around. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.